We all have that one favorite artist. You listen to his songs all day long and buy tickets to see him play. But what if your favorite DJ didn't actually make his own music? Hey everyone, it's Terry. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about one of the most scandalous and avoided topics in the dance music community: ghost producing. I first thought this would be a rather easy topic to cover, cause people seem to just hate it and disagree with the whole concept of it. But as I dug deeper into the topic, I found that there are actually so many undiscovered aspects of this whole ghost producer thing. Just think of this: a ghost producing company even got a keynote session at Amsterdam Dance Event, aka the most solid and important occasion of the dance music industry. So there must be something worth talking about. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's take a look at some of the most circulated stories in the community and see if you've heard of any of these tracks. Dutch DJ slash producer Martin Voorhek is said to have produced party bangers like "Epic" by Quintino and Sandro Silvia. Wakanda by Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike. American DJ slash producer and also number 15 on 2019's Top 100 DJs, Cashmere is said to have produced dance music anthems like "Stampede" by Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike, as well as "Dubs" and "Borges." Tsunami by Dubs and Borges. British producer Chris Lake is said to have produced one of the most played track in 2019, "Losing It" by Fisher. I bet you recognize some of these tracks because they are just so popular. Just one party banger like those can win you a place in the scene, and the profit behind that one DJ name can be massive. That's why it's so important to have a good track. Now let's dive deeper and learn more about the business model. First, let's clarify the definition of a ghost producer because this is actually where a lot of people go wrong. A ghost producer is a person who produces the music but is never given any credit. Many people only look at the performance names on the title or on the cover, but if you go to ASCAP.com, standing for the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, there will actually be a complete list of people contributing to the track. You can actually find many of those so-called ghost producers on the co-producer list. In most ghost production cases, a contract is signed to disallow the ghost producer from receiving any credit from the track. So these people on the co-producer list are not eligible to be called ghost producers since they're technically credited, even though we don't know if they actually make the full song. As rumors related to ghost producing have been there for a long time and seem impossible to be a hundred percent proven, there is one thing that's true. Ghost production is an existing and thriving part of the music industry, and there are solid reasons why. Here are some of the reasons why we need ghost producers in the industry. Number one, it could be the opportunity for you to actually become a big hit. Three times number one DJ in the world and the youngest among them all, Martin Garrix is one of those successful cases. In an interview, he recalled, "Then I made a ghost production for somebody else. I can't tell you which track I made, but this track got signed to Spinning Records and became really big. They found out that I made it, and so they invited me to their office, and I played them my other stuff, and we signed." Number two, being a ghost producer sharpens your producing skills. You will be able to make various styles of music because ghost producers don't just make music; they do what needs to be done. Almost every famous DJ now who started out as a ghost producer is incredibly versatile and a master of production. For example, Martin Garrix, Cashmere, and Martin Vorg. Number three, not every producer wants to be a DJ, and not every DJ wants to be a producer. It's just kind of the criteria to become big right now. You might be a great DJ but have no idea how to make music, or you might make great music but suck at performing. People expect you to do both, but the fact is that just not a lot of people can pull that off. Number four, even if you can do both DJ and producing, you just don't have enough time to be in the studio while keeping a busy tour schedule. 
As streaming services becoming popular, show fee from live performances instead of profits from song royalty has become a vital part of income for artists. And it's way too hard to do shows all the time while being able to make quality music. Number five, not everyone has the qualities to be a star. Some people just shy away from the limelight and want privacy. And most of all, we all know that being a star is never just about skills, looks, personal charisma, marketing and PR. These could be the vital factors. Being a ghost producer could be an easier career path. Instead of forcing yourself to become something you're not born to become, you get paid and at some level, you live your dream of making music full time. Now, it seems like this is an efficient business model. Everyone is in his own fit in a system and it keeps the machine working. However, when there's a system, there will definitely be people who are deprived in the system. Here are some truth and quotes from the people who are living the life as a ghost producer that may change your mind. First of all, it's impossible for everyone to be successful. People thought they could work their way up in the industry and become big. People are being oblivious to you for your entire life, but that's not the mindset when you do ghost producing. You're gonna think that at some point, people are gonna know who I am. It just never happens. The people that are at the top want to stay at the top, so they'll pay you $5,000 a month to not exist, just so that they can stay relevant. But you accept that $5,000 a month, thinking that this is a part of you eventually becoming relevant, only for you to never become relevant. Like all stories we read on magazines about successful people, it's never a regular thing to be on the top of the pyramid. Martin Garrick succeeded not only because he is an amazing producer, but he also has the qualities to be a star and got really really lucky at some point. Another thing is, we all know that music is a business, but have we all forgotten that music is also a form of art, and art is all about creativity and originality. You don't just buy a piece off someone and tell other people it's yours. It's just not how art works. Producer Ashley Walbridge and his buddy Gary Thamory, also an amazing producer, did a project called Cunts. Are you sure we don't need any talent at all? That roasted all fake producers out there who use ghost producers to become famous. So how do you guys think? I personally fall more on the side where music as a form of art needs to be made originally and shouldn't be traded like merchandise. I feel kind of bad that the business and the system is the way it is right now despite the huge profit behind this whole star making thing because there are DJs and producers who maintain touring and producing at the same time. So maybe it's really better for people to do what they're good at and receive what they deserve. Nothing more and nothing fake. But of course, it's just my opinion. What's your stand on this? Leave a comment down below to let me know. That's pretty much it for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Also, go ahead and follow me on my socials so you don't miss anything from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!